Yup, it's Culturama again, and this is your host, Lee Coyne, and I have two special guests here, musicians par excellence. We have Jeff Reed, and we have John Kurtzen, and they're both from Southern Oregon to begin with. Uh, John now lives in Aloha. Yeah, up in the Portland area. And you live where? I live in Myrtle Creek. Oh, yes, I know down near Roseburg, Winston yeah. area. Yeah. I know you have to go, go across the bridge and over the... It's a winding way, and then there's, a, I think, a diner or a food place down on the left side of oh, the yeah. road. I can't remember what its name is. I, I lived in Roseburg for a while. Anyway, we want to find out about these valiant musicians and how they got started and all. So let's go back to their school days. And I think we'll start with John. Did you play an instrument in school? Did you get interested then? Yeah, actually, uh, I played... Uh, I started in fifth grade playing trumpet and switched to trombone. Wow. And when I was in high school, and drums kind of came, it was kind of uh, kind of by accident. And uh, like when I was a junior, the summer of my junior year, two, a couple of friends of mine were playing in the talent show and their mm. drummer wouldn't show up for practice. And so I just kind of, they were like, you want to sit in one day? And we just kind of did. And so a friend of mine, a bass player and myself, we had our kind of our own band for a while and he was friends mm -hmm. with Jeff and our other guitarist Jason who's since passed away he's uh, wanted us to say mm -hmm. well we go join their band and so that's kind of summer of 87 when we were in high school that's kind of how it was formed. So. 87 write that down in your your notes on your yellow legal pad because it's going to give you a quiz about this after <laughs> so that you know their biographies front and back. Okay and Jeff uh, you also grew up in the same town in, in Winston or where? Yeah, uh, we, I grew up in Winston, and uh, uh, all our parents and everyone worked at the same company. There's a big plywood mill down the road, so mm -hmm. everybody knows each other. And mm -hmm. anyway, yeah. Is it's it still a, there, or did the termites run you out of business? No, no, it's still there. I, I work there, so yeah. Okay. Good. Generational thing. <laughs> and you work at Intel. Yes. Okay, good. So tell us how you got involved with your particular instrument. Did it start in school? Did it my uh, my mom yeah. kind of forced me to take piano lessons when I was really young, mm -hmm. and that kind of got me into uh, I learned the basics of music, and then uh, I always wanted to play guitar though. Ever since I ever since I heard the Beatles, I wanted uh -huh. to play the guitar. I was a big oh. Beatles fan, so good. I have a video of the Beatles if you want to borrow it. <laughs> cool. If you still have a VCR, not too many people <laughs> still have it. It's old generation stuff. Anyway, uh, I got a guitar when I was about nine years old. Mm. It's a birthday present? No, I uh, actually colored a, a, a picture of Santa Claus on a Safeway's grocery bag mm. and handed it in. It was like a drawing. Oh, and I won $100. $100 and uh, I bought two things. I bought a, a cassette recorder and a, a little acoustic guitar. Mm -hmm. I think my mom and dad's probably threw in a few dollars to get it was probably more than a hundred dollars but they probably threw in some mm -hmm. anyway yeah and then I started playing guitar and never went back oh. so did you now the Beatles were your heroes what about John did you have any particular group yeah. that, that you when that, I that you wanted to imitate emulate yeah when I was growing up I uh, I really used to play my uh, my mom was a big Elvis uh, Presley, Roy Orbison fan, so I used to play her mm. Elvis Presley albums until they were, you know, just kind of worn out all the way. And when yeah. I was in, yeah. I started writing lyrics for songs when I was actually yeah. in high school and just, I just had a lot of sheets of lyrics and just basically I've always wanted to perform because I wasn't like Elvis Presley and Rick Springfield from mm -hmm. my early days. I was just always influenced by them and stuff. And, mm -hmm. And Jeff and I have known each other since first grade, so we, wow. we knew each other before In we formed the band. Age and so. of innocence. Yeah. <laughs> so cool. Yeah. yeah. What would you say is the biggest change in Jeff since you first met him, aside from being a few pounds lighter? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think over, overall our band has, uh, you know, obviously we're mm -hmm. a a lot more accomplished musicians than when we first started because mm -hmm. it's just, yeah. you know, the the songs themselves that we wrote back then actually, you know, through the years, they have, because uh, they're really good songs, they've kind of held their own. We've uh, kind of re-recorded them and, you know, they sound, technically sound 
better than they did in those days. Yeah. But I think as far as just all the mm -hmm. times, and just him and me in particular, all we played everywhere from a like a high school barbecue to outdoor venues. And this last year we played with like big rock star uh, shows, kind of opening for other well, other bands when they come through. Where was that? Up in we played up in Vancouver. We played mm. for a couple. Uh, a uh, couple like 80s metal uh, metal bands there. Mm -hmm. the, the singers will do like acoustic tours. Mm -hmm. They'll come through town because we played with uh, Don Dockin of Dockin and we played with Phil Lewis who sings for LA Guns. Mm -hmm. So they kind of have, when they come through town, they do like four, have four or five bands that'll kind of do their sets and then they play at the end. So, but it was a really good mm -hmm. experience and it just kind of, any little thing we can do to kind of expand our fan base, you know, we're always, up for the challenge and stuff. So, yeah. uh, Jeff, what would you say was the outstanding concert venue you've played up to now? Most outstanding. Um, Most memorable in your minds. I don't know. There was a we. Uh, there was a time I played another band, and we did a concert at the Roseburg, uh, the Roseburg Fairgrounds mm -hmm. in front of an audience of five thousand people. Douglas County. Wow. And uh, I think that was probably the best. It was, it's really nice because you, I always figure you have about 10% of the audience in a live show because mm -hmm. everybody, most people just came to visit. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but when there's 10% 10, 10 of 5,000 cheer when you end a song, ah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. Uh, Did you have to sign autographs too? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, with the, every, everybody here. loved us down there. And that paparazzi was, came to follow you with. <laughs> We had, a, and stuff. we had a merch table and mm -hmm. we almost sold everything on our merch table. It was pretty fun. Mm -hmm. John, does the band have a theme song? Your group here? Uh, a lot of, a lot of our, our songs are based around, a lot of it is, ex, our songs are like experience based, just kind of, kind of our main theme I think would be just, just kind of the sounds cliche but just kind of following the rock and roll dream you know we mm -hmm. played every because every show we have is just as important to us as whether it's a big outdoor show and you know, we played with also uh the f um former singer of brian howe the former singer of bad company we played okay. big shows and we played you know all smaller venues too and mm -hmm. and that's the biggest because we have a lot of our songs center yeah. around what's you know living what's, out what's your dream what's coming up in the Third of the summer, you have some things planned now. Yeah, we we have uh, we let, have. Let our viewers know they're. Yeah, we have. They're some, writing it down and they get. Some kind of things. Figuring out the mileage and all that stuff. Yeah, we have some kind of stuff that we're kind of working on, and our kind of our uh, our thing. We've just finished up our. We have like one or two more songs. We're just finished recording for our third album, and then we have some stuff mm -hmm. coming up over the summer that are kind. Of, it's still kind of in the works, and so we kind of. Mm -hmm. Don't like jinx ourselves and tell no. it beforehand. So do you know the name of the through. album yet? Yeah, the the latest uh, the latest album yeah. is "The Fire Still Burns." The fire still burns. <laughs> Look for it. And that's not an arsonist stream either. That should be released sometime this summer. We should be having a release. Okay, party and uh, Jeff, you want to tell us what the website is so people can look up and follow you guys? Yeah, it's just www.paradoxflashback.com. Paradox flashback is one phrase. One word, all lowercase. Okay. Uh, for those of you who are seventh grade reading like me, P A R A D O X, paradox and flashback, you know, flash, the flash Gordon and back like setback. Yep. We all face some yeah. of them. And on that website, you can listen to all of our songs and uh, mm -hmm. some of the new ones. There's a couple of new ones on there. Tell us what the names of the new songs are that, and their style and all. Uh, the the one song off the new album that seems to get a lot of attention is uh, called currently untitled yep. and there's a video on uh, you can find on our website that has that song on it now you were saying about fearing getting old and dying and all in that first song if i track down the lyrics a little bit yeah is that imagined or are you really shaking in your boots <laughs> that when your hair turns gray or that your hair will be much <laughs> less follically challenged I don't know. When I, uh, the day like I wrote me. that song, I was just feeling, mm -hmm. uh, just you know, I think the the line that got got me going on that song mm -hmm. was, "If I'm being real, mm -hmm. you know, 
I want a song that just talks about the reality yeah. of the situation. Yeah. You happen to be playing here in May, which is Older Americans Month, so it's interesting you bring in aging, because it's supposed to celebrate aging. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'm in my 70s already, just a young dude, and all, uh, but still somewhat like an energizer bunny, they yeah, tell me. It's a weird song, because whenever we play that song in particular, there'll be some people have told us that they, they can't listen to it because it just affects them so much. But mm. but it's funny when we play that song, no matter where we're at, it's almost like people, you can kind of look out there, and it's almost yeah. like that they're in a trance. It just kind of affects them that home? much. And, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> they, yeah. they may not hear that all that well, some of them. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't want it to affect them too to much. just tap their feet from. Well, some of them, like my former wife, will be in her wheelchair, be tapping her feet. And, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit the tambourine. You don't see tambourines all that often, and. Yeah, it's just uh, it's uh, I've just played, used it a couple of times, mainly on radio radio interviews where there wasn't the mm -hmm. space to take take the drums in there, and like on my drum set, I have mm -hmm. cowbell and and. Uh, I can. Uh, I haven't incorporated it yet. So you're a percussion well. man. Yeah. With the repercussions, <laughs> and, uh, untitled. Yeah. <laughs> uh huh. Are there some thought? Well, tell us a little bit songwriting, because a lot of us out there just are on the very edges. Of what? What? What are some of the challenges you face in songwriting? Uh, a lot of it is. Some of them will come real easy, and a lot of times, uh, Jeff and I have. Uh, recorded uh, so many songs for so long a lot of times when we go into the studio mm -hmm. we'll just have and scratch out a few ideas on paper as far as lyrics or he'll have a guitar riff and we just kind of bounce things back and forth and we can a lot of times come up with four or five new songs just within mm -hmm. a day's time and it's just a lot of times it'll just be we'll re kind of record them in clumps maybe two or three songs mm -hmm. and then they'll we'll set them in the can and then come back and wow. a few months later in between because we have shows going on a lot of times mm -hmm. in between like the whole writing process for mm -hmm. the latest album took about two years you know partially is because we mm -hmm. we had a time we had three and four members in the band so we had mm -hmm. personnel changes in between just mm -hmm. writing the songs so now you said that you played at Duffy's uh, hangar and also at the Triangle Cafe, is yeah, it? Yeah, the Tri. Yeah, it was I think it was a couple of years ago we played there. Mm -hmm. But we played we played all up and down. We, in fact, last year we played uh, out at Pendleton Bike Week where mm -hmm. they had the big motorcycle rally and oh. they had Three Dog Night was out there. Mm -hmm. And we played uh, as far, probably far south as we've went all the way over to Klamath Falls. And we were shot a couple live videos. We went to the Oregon coast. Mm -hmm. and had a videographer come down from mm -hmm. Tacoma, Washington to shoot that with us and we played mm -hmm. as far north as uh, up in Vancouver, Washington. Mm -hmm. So we're looking to do more, looking okay. for more shows okay, up I in Washington. I have an idea for a theme and it's in the back of my mind. Be the first people I'm telling. Uh, if you can get whip together a medley of scary monster songs like Purple People Eater and <laughs> the Monster Mesh and all, all right. and put together a, a scary Halloween program and advertise yourself as the musical monster of mm -hmm. the <laughs> new age or something like that. No, we've had some crazy shows at Halloween for yeah. sure. And you can even wear a mask. And, I mean, a lot of us wear masks year long in terms of business and job hunting and date hunting and that kind of stuff, yeah. but that's a different kind of mask, <laughs> a mask that you ask. Yeah. Uh, tell us in the few minutes remaining a little bit how you learned to play the tambourine and all. What are some of the um, techniques? Because that seems like it's sort of an easy thing to. Handle. Yeah, it is kind. Of, it's it seems it seems easier than it is. I just uh, I always remember when I was growing up in church and you'd always see the ladies because all the pews it would have the tambourine sitting right there, so mm -hmm. they just pick them up and just be going crazy with them. Really, I'd never up until it was about a year ago we did another radio interview. I just uh, stopped by the music store and grabbed one on the way there because. The, the kind of the wooden boxes that people play sometimes, they were, for as little as we use them, you know, they're like uh, well beyond 100 bucks, and I figured, well, I'll just use a tambourine instead. And oh, yeah. Just, just basically to How just much does a tambourine cost usually? Uh, probably the price tag, yeah, it's $25, this one was. Oh, man, that's, <laughs> that's a bargain in this musical jungle out there. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Any closing thoughts? We have about a minute left. And what advice would you give to people who want to start a band? Where do you begin? 
It's just really the the band uh, aside just from you know it's your a lot of times this is kind of like our second family so a lot of uh, the band overall is you you kind of have to have you know be biggest thing is being accountable mm -hmm. for you know when you're because you're every time we do something it's the band's reputation and so when you say sure. you're going to be somewhere to be to be there and always to have a good rapport with people mm -hmm. that we. You know that we book shows with and you know just every show is as, just as important as any other show so good and we enjoy meeting the people that's the one of the greatest things is just so performing to check the them. website i want to thank you then john and yeah, jeff thank you. the two j's thank you coming from up you're from aloha and you're now from winston myrtle creek myrtle creek okay take care we hope you give us some other ideas for musicians in the area okay. have a happy holiday bye for now this song is called Untitled.